Hello and welcome to the Collider Recap Star Wars Rebels show. This is season two, episode 11. Yes, people, that is episode 11, not episode 12. You're not counting the Siege of the Fall as an episode. <laughs> this is the protector of Concord Dawn. We're here to talk about it today. I'm in the host chair today, but I am joined by the host of Collider Movie Talk and my co-host right now for Star Wars World Recap Show, John Campia. Hey, everybody. I'm so glad to be back. I missed an episode there, so now I'm back. Very excited about it. Really enjoyed last night's episode. I know we were talking about the episode this week, but I, John, I never got to talk to you about the big trailer that was revealed. You and Christian did an awesome reaction oh video God. to it. Last week, yeah. uh, we had uh, uh, Tiffany here and Christian talking about the trailer. So I just want to hear your thoughts a little bit on like what you're thi- how, how geared up are you for Star Wars? I, I, cu- I couldn't believe how good that teaser. Like, I was really impressed when they released, if it was, I think it was around Comic-Con, they released the trailer for the first half of season two, right? And that's where they showed us Vader and all that. It's like, oh my gosh, they will <laughs> never do a trailer as good as this. Get it out of here. Mm-hmm. This trailer for season two B, I guess you can call it, mm-hmm. season two part B, was outstanding. Like there's so many moments in that trailer. Well, you guys probably saw the reaction mm-hmm. video that me and Christian did. And we were like, what What the hell is going on? And it's like, and Darth Maul shows up yep. and like, the lightsabers and the fighting and space whales and all that kind of stuff. I was so freaking enthused. It's one of those, every once in a while you come across like a trailer where there are a lot of trailers you like and love, Mm -hmm. but then every once in a while you come across a trailer where like you're grabbing every friend you know. It's like, wait a minute, have you seen the Rebels season two B trailer yet? And no? Give me a second, pull it up in your phone. And because I was just showing it to people for days after that. It's like even people had never seen Rebels. It was trending on YouTube for a while. A lot of views on that video. I mean, just on the Star Wars on the YouTube page. Tons yeah, of views. oh, yeah. Like it's, it's, I can't remember. Millions. Lost yeah, yeah. In the mm. millions. I think that is the type of trailer that would, even somebody who's never watched Rebels yet, mm. would turn on to Rebels. Yeah. And it was just that good. And I'm that stoked and I'm that excited. Can't wait to see some of the stuff that they showed us in there. One more thing, John. What did you think of Princess Leia last week? Were you happy to see her? Yes, I was. was and, and you know what? They, it didn't. This is the thing. When they talked about maybe using some, you know, classic characters, mm-hmm. my fear was always will they feel forced? You know what I mean? No pun intended. But will they feel like they're just being jammed in there? For like, So when we got to see Lando, there was a bit of that episode that felt a little forced. Mm-hmm. But then they actually used it in a really good plot device sort of way, and so it made sense. Going into Princess Leia, I was really worried about it feeling just kind of forced in there for the sake of it. But it made total sense. She was actually there doing what she absolutely would have been doing that, that time anyway. Mm-hmm. Her character was consistent with what who we see and where we see Princess Leia going later on in life once we get to the original films. So I actually ended up, even though I was worried about it, I actually ended up being really happy with it. There's a little controversy about the voice. So right? too mature for her age, being around what 15 years old. Did you did you find that? I, I didn't I didn't have a problem with it. I thought it was I, fine. I had no problem with it. And here's why: because you still had to make the voice quasi recognizable. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I totally got that it sounded more like Leia from Episode Four. But that made sense to me. And so to me, that wasn't a problem. No issue for me at all. I understand why they did it. It was the right decision for them to do that. So no, the sound of the voice, no issue for me. As always, though, we're going to talk about this week's episode, Pector yes. Concord Dawn. Great. John, you, you had actually, I came into the Collider Studios here. I watched the episode. You had just finished watching the episode no, and I started. it's funny because I was sitting, well, we, <laughs> the, the trade secret, we actually, yeah. the studio sends us advanced copies right. to mm-hmm. look at so we can do the recap mm-hmm. show on time, right? So I'm actually, you weren't in the studio yet. So yeah. I'm in my office like, well, I, we're waiting around to do it. We were, I can't, we were going to do Flash. Flash, yeah, Flash. We were yeah. going to do our Flash recap show last night. So now I got some time to kill. I'm going to watch <laughs> the Rebels episode right now. And I watch it and I swear, as soon as the end credits roll, I hit stop. I hear the opening music coming out <laughs> of the main room in the studio. And David's out there just starting and I can walk in. I say, this one's good. Great opening. Incredible opening. Beautiful oh. opening with like the, the blues and purples with the shattered planet in the background. Yes. Awesome space combat scene. Very cool scene. Hera and Sabine trying to, basically what they're trying to do is they're trying to find a shortcut uh, to get yes. more allies, but they have to go through Mandalorian space. The Concord Dawn system is what it's called to get there. And they run into some trouble. There's yeah. a guy named Fen Rao who's 
pretty badass. He was, he was incredibly badass. And what I really liked, those were some pretty slick ass fighters mm -hmm. that they had. There was a little bit of B wing in them, in the in the sense that the centralized cockpit would hold still as the rest of the yeah. ship would rotate around, yeah. much like the B wing. Uh, so those looked awesome. And you know, you said as I came into the studio and you were already watching it, I had already seen the episode, but wow, kind of dark and yeah. graphic. Like when those other two pilots, those two pilots who were with Sabine, um, when they died and they, they go camera inside the cockpit yeah. to see that pilot's final moments. Like, you know, people are going to die in the show, but you kind of expect that, you know, she's hair is going to look over to her left and see her, you know, wingman's ship blow up. Right. But instead, the camera goes in the cockpit and you see the fire burn up around him. And the scream, too, the ah yeah. kind of thing. I mean, this isn't like when we're watching cartoons as a kid when G.I. Joe blow up a plane and you see the parachute. Hey, There's always, no parachute. Always see the parachute. There's no parachute in this one. No parachute in this <laughs> one. So they went, they, they immediately set the stakes mm -hmm. by doing that. When you do that, you set the stakes, and they did a great job at that. It was wonderful um, space combat. Well, my, my lone little myth at it, though, was that Hera's ship gets so badly damaged and comes out of hyperspace back at the Red Fleet, and the <laughs> ship's almost like that ship could not have gone through hyperspace. No. John, this isn't real life. I know it's not real life, <laughs> but that ship could not have traveled through hyperspace. But whatever, we get we right because we're talking about what we liked, and I, I loved after well, the broken ship does go through hyperspace. How all the pieces kind of like just stayed like around it, almost like mm -hmm. in a gravitational pull. I don't know if the shields were holding that in. Also, too, I like I don't like seeing, but Hera got messed up. And the yes. episode played with us a little bit because you think Kanan, he's just, just focused on going and completing this mission, going back. I thought he was going to go out for some revenge. You know, he's a Jedi, but he's not, you know, the always most peaceful-minded Jedi we have out there. He's got a little rough around the edges. But we learn after, you know, we see Sabine kind of uh, hit hitchhikes a ride that he is trying to uh, get allies. He's like, look, everybody deserves a second chance. And, of course, we learn, what I think is one of the best scenes of the episode, the cantina scene with uh, Fen Rao and yep. uh, Kanan showing that war story that happened yep. a long time ago. That I really like that, that That had great feel to it. Mm -hmm. It made it feel very, like a very lived-in galaxy at that point. You know, but I wasn't surprised by Kanan's you know, calm approach mm -hmm. to it because every go back, like he is gruff and he is all that kind of stuff, but he's never been given to rage. You know True. what I mean? Yeah. And you've even heard him going back into season one. He's constantly trying to remind Ezra, control yourself. Like, mm -hmm. don't give in to that because he can sense. I mean, we believe he already senses a little bit of darkness in Ezra. Mm -hmm. And I think he is quite opposite of that. So, it didn't really surprise me. I think it would have been a little bit more out of character if you went, they hurt her, I'm going to go get him. That would have been a little more out of character for him. So he was calm, she's mm -hmm. fine, I'm going to go complete this mission. Mm -hmm. um, and he did that, and so that was consistent for me, and I thought it was very well played out. I thought Sabine was a really nice little addition to it as well. You just assume you're going to see Ezra go with him. And I don't think they did a very good job explaining why he didn't take uh, Ezra along with him. I can understand taking Sabine as Mandalorian. She took probably, Chopper. Yeah, took who, Chopper. Who, begrudgingly, who didn't want to go. Yeah. But they needed him, as it yeah. turns out. So it would have been neat to see them bring Ezra along too, but that was fine that they went at, uh, went at it that way. The action was very good. The war stories. I think this ma new Mandalorian we have, uh, Fen Rao, yeah, Fen Rao, um, yeah. is he's going to come back into play. And you know what? They've been doing that a lot season two so far in introducing us to characters that you know they're not done with yet. You know, whether it's the governor or whether it's Fen Rao or whether it's, they've come across various characters and then they just kind of put in their back pocket and you just have a feeling whether it's gonna be in season two or next year in season three, you just know they're gonna be brought back into play. So that's gonna be really interesting to see. I liked how at the end, Fen Rao said like, we're friends, but I'm doing this basically out of obligation. Yeah. I'm in a situation, so I have well, to... Necessity, necessity really. Yeah, it's yeah. a necessity. It's the lesser of two do evils it. for him. He has to do it. So, But like you said, I think he's going to come back. I think because they they, 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 shared, they shared a battleground together at some point in history. Yes. I don't know the exact specifics, but they shared a battleground. I think they're going to become allies later on. Well, what did you think of the Mandalorians just being introduced? I mean, I guess maybe I want to go into one of my weaknesses right now is that I, I think Sabine's story was a little rushed. Because yeah. she kind of, it was a, in a kind of an action scene. She's like, they're like, who are you? It's like, oh, you're from Death Watch. Those are traitors. And she's like, yeah, but I'm not really with them. I don't believe in their ideals and everything. And then I feel like this kind of rushed over her. So I feel like I, this was an episode to really take advantage of who Sabine is. I don't think we got that in this, this week. No, I know, you know, that's the funny thing. They didn't even really need to give us a big backstory, but then leave a lot of that other stuff out. Yeah. Like, you're right. That was, that felt very, 
well, I used the term before, but I'll use it now. It felt forced. Mm -hmm. It felt like they were trying to give us background and shape and context to Sabine, and that was the wrong moment to do it. Because you're right, it felt out of place. It didn't feel right. That wasn't the right time to do it. I completely agree with you on that. One of the, the negatives for me, though, going back to the space battle, aside from that ship would not have traveled <laughs> through hyperspace, and I was waiting through the rest of the episode to see if they would address it. Everybody's all mad that Hera got a boo-boo. There are two other rebel pilots that died. <laughs> died fighting alongside yeah. them, and they got blown out of space, and nobody mentions them. It's like, mm. I, I gotta get revenge because you hurt Hera. What about those other two schlubs that were risking their lives and flying with you and just got blown to smithereens for your mission and no mention of, of them at all? I, I kind of felt like that was a little bit weird. It de for me, it dehumanized the characters a little bit, and I thought that would have been a great opportunity with them setting it up, put, putting the camera in the cockpit, watching them die, that would have been a great moment to utilize later on for setting up the peril of what we're doing, what this rebellion means. Those heroes died mm -hmm. for this cause, but instead they completely swept it under the rug and dehumanized it a bit for me, which is too bad because in an otherwise really solid episode, that was that was one thing that kind of stuck with me through the rest of the uh, through the rest of the show. Once again, I completely agree with you because especially at the stage at the I don't even know if we can even call this the Rebel Alliance yet because it's still the early stages. Yeah, they're rebels. They're not rebels. A rebel alliance. Not yeah. an alliance. Yeah. They're not an alliance. But every life is so precious. They don't have the Imperials use. They have that cannon fodder. They can just throw troops and troops yeah. and troops. But they're 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 they're. Uh, their troops are valuable. So you think if they would lose a couple, they would really, they didn't have to do like a whole funeral service, you know, and send the casket, you know, like, Out you know, space. like, you know, uh, Star Trek Spock. style with Spock, you know, <laughs> but I mean, they could have at least said like, you know, yeah, we fought hard today and we lost a few people. Just like one line, just one line. Yeah, I think, I think some kind of that. acknowledgement of it would have been really nice. Now, again, that is my one glaring weakness mm -hmm. in what it was otherwise to me a very satisfying, very entertaining. It did feel in a 20 plus episode season, you're gonna get some episodes that are more setup or filler. And setup and filler are not bad. Those are good things, mm -hmm. those are needed to give you a bigger payoff later on. And that's fine. I felt like this was a nice setup episode. Um, there was no big payoff in this particular episode. That's fine. We don't need them all to be mm -hmm. payoff after payoff. I think this is going to really feed into other episodes well. Thanks to a little bit more of uh, the evolution of Kanan. Thanks to the fact that, you know, we've seen rebel pilots die now, that Hera is not invulnerable. She can get hurt as well. She's not invincible. Because mm -hmm. I think watching the show through season one, season two, when Hera's behind the stick in a cockpit, you kind of think of her as immortal and yeah. invincible. And this was our first time really seeing her get outclassed. So there's a lot of really neat small things that happen in this episode that I think pave the way for where we're going for the rest of season two. Usually we do, uh, before we wrap up this, uh, these Rebels recaps, we talk a little bit about uh, what we see uh, going forward. John, you were just, just talking right now, alluding to the future, and this is a setup. What do you see this setting us up for? Like, where do you, I know we saw that huge trailer, of course, all this stuff, yeah. and like, but I think that's gonna be further down the road. Like, what do you see more coming in the immediate future? Well, I mean, the road is not that long anymore. Sure. We are now right. into the second half of the season, and we're going. Um, like I said, I, I think, with the injuries of Hera, they set us up where are, we're going to look at that character a little bit different mm -hmm. now. I think now, by her getting shot out of the sky like she did, I think that will heighten the excitement and the threat level and the stakes when we see her in space combat now. Because it was getting to the point where we see Hera in space combat mm -hmm. and we're not worried because she's invincible. And that's going to be different now. I think space combat moving forward is going to feel a little bit more heightened. The, the risks are going to be a little bit more there. But we are absolutely going to get more in, and I wouldn't be surprised if it starts next week into a Sakatano and starting to reveal. Look, we learned from the trailer because we were speculating. I think Ashoka knows who Vader is, mm -hmm. but they never said that clearly. To me, the trailer made it clear. She knows who Vader is. She knows Vader is Anakin. And I think we're going to see in the next two to three episodes her make that reveal to Ezra and Kanan, and that's where things are really going to start to step up. Where do you see things going? I'm excited for that. Uh, I want to say I hope next week that um, uh, Hera is beat up. I hope she has some bruises. I hope she's not like, all healed all of a sudden. Yeah. Like Flash so, Force, she's healed. She'll be wearing a sling or something. Yeah, something. Yeah. Maybe got a little limp or something like that. Uh, I did. I, I, I cheated a little bit. 
because I was uh, as I was looking over at the episodes coming up, I, I didn't see a description. I have no idea what's going to happen. You saw but the title? I saw a title. What was the title next week? The episode? title is something Lasan, which is Zeb's home world. Right. That's right. So it almost like the remnants or something about Lasan. So I think you know he thinks he's the last of his kind. He thinks yeah. he's the only one left. So I think that. We're going to meet somebody else from his culture, if not, maybe go to that world or whatever uh, remnant exists of that. And I think we're going to meet because Zeb has not a good Zeb episode in a while. We haven't had Zeb no. by himself in a while. I can't even really think of a truly Zeb centric episode. No, like I know a- him and Chopper had some adventures when they when they first came into contact with the new Inquisitors. Zeb yep. and Chopper were kind of yeah, helping that's them. Right. They yeah. helped save that's them. That's right. But- he did get a bit of focus. Right. And then I saw that the episode after that is titled. Uh, the death of Tano at the hands of Darth Vader. I don't know oh, if that's wow. a spoiler. No. I don't know. It's this very revealing no, title. I have no, no idea no, what that's going to be about. That was not the name of the title. I'm making, totally <laughs> making that's that gonna up. That's going to be about. Uh, well, that, that, that's our recap uh, for this week, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us here uh, on Collider Video. We're here every Wednesday that there's a new episode to talk about Rebels Recap, of course. Uh, hopefully, we'll have the trio here. Uh, yeah, Christian, Christian. Christian. He's Christian at is, Sundance still, right? He's actually on a plane right now on his way back from Sundance. Mm-hmm. Could not make it back here in time, but he will be back next week. Well, uh, you can. Uh, I'm your host, David Griffin. Uh, you can find. Well, actually, I should introduce John. Where can people find you? You're, you're... You can find me on Facebook and on Twitter. <laughs> Simply follow me there at John Campy. And I've got a new novel coming up, by the way, guys. Keep your eyes open. Very, very shortly, I'm going to be releasing my new novel, The Pride. So keep your eyes open for that. Read John's novel, everybody. I'm David Griffin. You can find me here at Griffin DE on Twitter. Uh, also, I do the Flash recap show with John. Flashes, everything's back. All these season, mid season premieres. So everything's great. back. It's so great. It's a good time <laughs> to be alive, people. Uh, thank you for joining us this week. And again, uh, find everything here on Collider Video, Collider.com. Uh, we'll be back with you next week to talk about some more Star Wars Rebels.